Hi, my name is Tara Anand. I am from Westchester, New York, which is actually where I am right now. I graduated in 2020 from Barnard College at Columbia. In, in undergrad, I studied computer science, but I, I didn't always know that I wanted to study computer science. I actually came to college thinking I might want to go on a pre-med track and study biochemistry and medicine. And I was just kind of taking a computer science class for fun, but I found that it was really um, exciting and empowering to see the way that computational techniques could be used to analyze and process data and to uncover kind of the knowledge held within. So I was naturally kind of interested in how these computational techniques could be used in the context of medicine and healthcare. And I found that, you know, having an undergraduate degree in computer science does naturally really support all this work because that's kind of what biomedical informatics is all about, looking at how computational techniques can be used in medicine to help advance the, the knowledge in that field. Yeah, so I think, I think Columbia is a really great place to study biomedical informatics specifically because there are faculty members who are doing really exciting work who are really at the forefront of this field. And we also have a really great computer science department that we collaborate with, as well as the medical school here in the hospital. There are a lot of really great resources to study. As well, being in the city, there are a lot of opportunities. Firstly, it's nice to live in the city. Um, it's also nice to connect with the other professionals in the field. There's kind of a real rich world of startups and other healthcare disciplines and industries here. And there, there are just like a lot of events going on. Um, of course, when we're not in the middle of a pandemic, there are more events then that you can kind of go to and really explore and meet people who are in this field of biomedical informatics and in healthcare and in technology um, from all sorts of facets. And it's really great to connect with all of those people. So I am a first year student and as a first year student, you get to sort of participate in these research rotations where you'll spend a semester uh, working with one PI in a lab. Um, and that's a really great opportunity to work on a more focused, it's only a semester long, so a shorter, smaller scale project, but really understand how to conduct research from beginning to end on that sort of scale and to work with um, different PIs and labs and understand what types of different research are going on. Um, so in my first semester, I worked on a project. One of the things I'm really interested in is natural language processing, as well as um, rare diseases. So my first semester project was focused on that. And I was looking at, you know, for rare diseases, we don't, we have this kind of like small data problem. We don't have a lot of, you know, big data, which I think is something that's really common in this field to think about big data. Um, but that's really hard for rare diseases where we maybe have 10 or fewer patients um, with that disease to kind of discover and learn from. And natural language processing can really help us in uh, parsing all of the clinical notes that exist for these patients where there's a lot of really rich information, but because it's free text, it's not structured data, we can't process it as easily as maybe we could just tables of, of values. Um, and so that my, my first rotation project was really focused on that work. Um, and that was really fun. Another thing that I'm interested in is uh, causal inference, which is looking at kind of causal relationships in medicine. And, and that can really advance medicine in a lot of ways if we're able to look at data that we already have gathered and determine these causal relationships. And I think something that's really important in medicine with kind of predictive analysis, causal inference, and this type of work is, depending on the context, understanding why we're getting the results that we're getting can be really important. And one strategy in causal inference is to base a lot of our analysis on graphical kind of models of the world. So maybe we'll create some causal diagrams where we can show how different variables and different um, kind of exposures and different variables in the environment interact with each other and that can serve as the basis of future analysis. And what's really great about that, having that model serve as the foundation of our work, is that we can be really transparent about any assumptions that we're making about medical knowledge and clinical knowledge that we're basing our um, future results on. 
and you know should any of our results break down at some point we can really point to what in our model is wrong because we're, we're able to really clearly articulate what it is and where all of our results are coming from so in my second semester i was working on a project kind of in this area looking at how we could maybe create causal diagrams in the context of medicine which understandably are, and maybe in an anticipated way are really complicated because there are a lot of different complicated interacting factors. Um, so can we use the, can we create these diagrams? And if so, can we use them to support these questions of causal inference? And so that's what I was getting to work on in my second semester. So I think to, to enter the field of biomedical informatics is really a unique process because as an interdisciplinary field, there are a lot of ways to potentially get connected and get involved in this field. I came from a more computational background, but a lot of my peers have a stronger background in medicine or public health maybe. And something that's really great about biomedical informatics is that we can all collaborate and all of these different prior experiences and backgrounds are really helpful. And any type of skill that you have, you can kind of focus on that and acquire and kind of get the support from others and learn yourself as you go, kind of maybe the more medicine in my case, since that's where I'm, um, my background's a little less strong. So that is, I think the biggest thing to think about when you're joining biomedical informatics is what you're really interested in. And to enter the field, I think it's really just great to read and um, gain exposure, even if you're maybe not understanding technical details of papers or the biological mechanisms that are maybe explained um, those types of knowledge and skills can come later and you can kind of work on acquiring, taking classes as you go along, but even just being able to get a, get a lay of the land in a sense of what are the big questions and the big challenges that exist in medicine and healthcare, because there's some really unique questions that in, in this field exist that aren't really questions that need to be asked in other contexts. So having a sense of what those questions are, I think is a really great way to discover what you might be interested in and also see where your skills and interests can kind of help address the, the issues that you're noticing and the big problems that exist in this field. Uh, so as a first year, I'm not 100% sure what I'll do when I graduate, but I know that I do really love doing research and I like the ability to really explore and uh, kind of dabble in a lot of different areas. Another thing that I really love doing is teaching. I've always liked working with younger students and a mentorship contest, context. I was a tutor for a long time and a teaching assistant. I really love teaching. So kind of given all of that, I do aspire to be a professor one day where I can be a PI in my own lab maybe and um, kind of drive the research in, in that context and then also work with uh, students and teach and help others learn and, and grow in this field as well.